Hey everyone, Kevin here, aka The Geek, and I'm back with another DFS Army Domination Station tutorial. This time we're going to talk about our PGA product, our golf optimizer, and as you can see on my screen, I've got it queued up for DraftKings Golf. Basics are the same as all of the other Domination Station formats. You choose the site, you choose the sport. You choose the slate, the DOM station pops up, you have certain information here that's very important, your odds, your DFS Army projections, your value rating, which is your points per dollar, and your salary. Um, so actually, I figured to start this one off, since golf is a fairly simple sport to optimize for, I'm going to get a little bit deeper here and jump over to our golf research station, because I think this is actually really important. This is where you get started with your golf research. It's actually US Open week this week, uh, so it's a really good time to check out some daily fantasy golf. It's an awesome sport, and our DFS Army tools are, they're, they're matched by no one. They're, everything's completely custom and completely awesome. So I'm just going to run through the actual research station real quick. Here you have your basic golfer info. You have your names, your, your salaries on the different sites, your projections. This is the DraftKings side, so you're going to see your your DraftKings projections. We leave the salaries on both of them so you can see which golfers are priced higher or lower, where the values are on one site relative to the other. So for example, Justin Rose is fairly cheap on DraftKings, but his salary is the same as Dustin Johnson, the top favorite on FanDuel. So that's an important note. Same thing with Rom. So some of these times, even Tiger Woods, a little, a little pricey on FanDuel. Um, but you could see some of these situations where you could pick out golfers that are being priced as super studs on one site, but not on the other. So Patrick Reed, there you go. So there's a lot of that going on this week, and you really want to take note of these salary discrepancies when you're setting up your lineups, right? All right, so that's one place I like to look real quick. Now you have your odds, your value based on projections, your win odds. And, you know, other things I'm looking at are general event histories. Recent form is super important. I want to see guys who are making cuts and doing well lately, golfing really well. And you can get a really quick picture of that. One of the places I like to go towards the bottom of the screen where the cheaper salaries are and look at, look for golfers that have been in really good recent form like Grillo, Hadley. These guys are going to be the chalk. Um, I like to check out their cut made percentage. I think this is really important. You want to get golfers who make the cut basically. You can, and, and you also like to find them at the cheaper salary ranges. Hey, I can get a, a really good cut maker at 6,700 on DraftKings this week. That's important with, um, Charles Howell III. Here's a, well, you also have to be careful of these numbers sometimes if they only recently played in one contest. So really cool stuff right there. Um, you have a ton of stats here on the research station that you could look at off the tee, approach to green. Um, fantasy scoring stats, points per hole, and all that kind of good stuff. So there's lots to explore here. I'm going to actually jump over to something called the Stat Cruncher, which is my favorite part of what we do, where this allows you to really um, create your own projections almost based on different factors. This total should actually be 50. I was messing around with it before. But you can weight different factors like the odds value. And, for example, putting this week, which is maybe an important week for putting and you can set your you can set your your weights for all these different stats and really kind of customize the projections even further than how they're initially set up so i think that's a really cool feature and i hope everybody kind of checks that out and uses it it's really something that no one else has and just some of the awesome tools we have at the dns army for golf now let's jump back over to the domination station because this is where the money's made Right, so this week, for example, there is a DraftKings Mini Max contest where you can generate 150 lineups, 25 cents a lineup if you want to work it that way. There's lots of contests going that are 20 entry max on DraftKings, FanDuel, lots of different contests to enter, and that's what the Domination Station is all about. So let's take a look real quick at the DraftKings side. And we're not actually loaded up for the U.S. Open here right now, so we're going to look at last week's tournament. And on DraftKings, the first thing we always have to do is 
set some likes or dislikes because DraftKings does require that. Um, we want to customize a little bit. So let's say I really like Dustin Johnson this week. I can like. If you notice, when you click like, you get a 5% boost in his projection. See, that just changed. If I go to love, I get a 10% boost. And if I go to adore, I'll get a 15% boost. And this will basically force Dustin Johnson into every single lineup. Uh, as you'll note, the fantasy points per dollar, which is the value rating, goes up as we do that. Um, you know, we can do that for other golfers. Let's say there's people we don't like. We want to slap a, a dislike, a hate, and enrage on them. I don't want Shane Lowry. Maybe you don't like uh, Bronson Burgoon. Put a dislike on him. You know, make sure he doesn't show up in those lineups. Put an enrage. I'm very mad at Bronson Burgoon right now. Um, the ass wagon, always play the ass wagon. He always makes the cut. Give him a like. Um, so there we go. There's, there's that, that's your basics. Now, here we go. Let's, let's make some lineups. All right. Just to run through real quick. This is your salary range filter. This allows you to filter out players based on salary range. Really don't use that very often for golf um fantasy points range that that's worth using if there's a guy projected for three fantasy points like this guy i probably don't want him in my lineup but he's not going to show up in your lineups anyway damn he's not showing up in your lineups anyway with that terrible projection but you can use that for different sports um salary cap sometimes this is an interesting uh feature where maybe you want to not allow the tool to go all the way up to fifty thousand in the massive contest if you hit the perfect 50 you're pretty much destined to be in a lot of ties so i do like to set this below 50,000. so i might go 49 8 just to make sure my lineups have some uniqueness this is something you can do in any sport that ties are very common um, number of lineups let's uh make a choice here so i'm just going to go 50 for the purposes of this video and not taking too long now a couple of uh important factors always leave it on fantasy points on golf that's your user selected projection you know if you modify it you might go 100 for this guy right we want to keep want to go by that optimal mode or tournament mode i'm going to explain tournament mode because tournament mode is awesome for this sport we go from optimal to tournament mode and basically tournament mode is it's a common misconception that it's unique or doing something different it's just giving you the optimal lineups with a with a twist it works with the max exposure setting for each player to force the tool to spread that player out into lineups across the entire pool of plays. I know that sounds confusing, but I'm going to show an example of how that works. All right, let's say I have Dustin Johnson. Let's start with, I'm going to, I'm going to jack up Dustin Johnson and Brooks Kupka on the projections for demonstrative purposes. Okay, these two guys are really high up. And let's set them both to 50%, 50%, okay? Now in optimal mode, these two guys are gonna show up together in the first 50% of the lineups you generate, and then never together, and they just won't show up in any of the last 50%. And that was something I didn't like. Notice they're showing up together in all the lineups as they're being generated and then it stops both of them are in 50 percent but they're on the all in 50 percent of the lineups together as you see okay so we went through the first 25 dustin johnson brooke cooper together 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 right and then all of the rest neither guy is in either of them now we don't like that situation so tournament mode let's change it around let's set let's set these a little bit they shouldn't be exactly the same so let's set this one to 60 and this one to 45, right? We're gonna to go to tournament mode. In tournament mode, they're not gonna show up together 100% of the time. Now they'll show on the screen here together because here, you'll see here, look, Johnson with no Kupka. Johnson, no Kupka. Johnson, no Kupka. They don't show up together 100% of the time anymore. Basically, the idea is to spread exposure out. There's a math equation involved here that will spread exposure of these two players out 
more generously. And as you do more players, it, it becomes more um, proficient. Right now, it's, it's difficult to actually show the example because the projections are so high that they show at the top because anyone with those two in it are going to show as the highest projected. But trust me, it spreads them out. So we want to use tournament mode and exposure maxes to take care of each player. Now let's go back to the original projections. Reset those settings, okay? Because I don't want to go too crazy like this. So how do I get started optimizing for golf? All right, so I've gone to my research station. I've selected the players that I want. I've gotten a pretty good idea of the exposures. But here's how I always start. I start by, again, going to tournament mode. I'm going to set a, a couple of likes on some special players that I want. I saw Charles Howell is a cut maker. I usually try to get um, heavier exposure to cheaper guys that I think will make the cut. That's just my personal strategy for golf. And so once I've figured out a couple of names that I think are going to be good, and I'm, uh, forgive me, I have not looked at this late, but I'll look at a couple of names that I think are going to be good for this one. So I'll give him likes, or let's say I'll give him a love or something like that. And I'll do a second one, Finau. He's been really good, so I'll give a love on him. And then we go ahead and we make, let's say, 50 lineups, right? Now, unique players is very important in, in golf. What this is going to do is force diversification of lineups. No lineup can be identical to within three players. So that's going to switch up the look of each and every lineup. Let's run 50, and I'll give you... a an idea of how I then narrow down the pool and kind of change things around. So we just ran 50 lineups. You could see my two likes are showing up a ton, 78%, Finau 72. This is Joaquin, you know, 42. So I'm looking at some of these exposures. I might say, no, I'm not, I'm not super comfortable with Howell at 78%. Let's set him to 60% because I only want 60% Howell. So I'll go Howell, I'll set him to 60% max. Now I got Finau, he's at 62, I actually only want about 50%. So let's go to 50% for him. Now I'm looking at Joaquin, Neiman, I'm like, I don't even, and Domin. These two guys, never even heard those names before. I don't want that much exposure because if either of these guys doesn't make the cut, I'm done. So I might go down to 50%. Here he is, Joaquin. I might go, let's say I'm going to set him to 30%. And who's the other guy? I've got Joaquin. I've got Domin. Let's set him down. Let's set him down at 25%. I don't want too much of that guy, right? So here we go. Let's run it again. Boom. Now your, your exposures are starting to level out a little bit more. Now let's say I'm seeing Chris Kirk down here. Hmm, I like Chris Kirk. I only got 4%. That's not enough. I'm going to jump over to Kirk, slap a like on him. Boom, let's try this again. How much Kirk do I get this time? Hey, there you go, 34%. Now you might say, well, that's a little more Kirk than I want. I mean, I don't like so little, but I don't want so much. Set your exposure. You only want 20%? Write it down. So basically, when you just run this raw, obviously you're going to get the top projected lineups in whatever order based on our projections, DFSR and projections best in the business, you have the option of going over to your stats cruncher, messing around with some of these numbers here, some of these um, weights, and creating your entire own set of projections based on these weights and whatever you want to weigh the most. Hey, I like weighting the odds. Maybe you go higher with that, whatever it is. Redo the numbers. You can type in your projections from this or you can just go and modify them using likes, loves, and all of that. Again, if you don't see a, a, a guy that you want in your in your pool, but he's not showing up, slap a like on him. Simple as that. So that's the basics of setting up your exposures. Once you're ready to download them, again, you run it one last time. Boom, I got it the way I want. I'm looking at these numbers. And let's say I like what I'm seeing here. Select all lineups. Hit download 50 lineups. Boom. Save it. And upload that directly to FanDuel or DraftKings or whichever site we're working on. That is it. Super simple to use the DFS Army Domination Station to crush golf. We've had massive winners. There's 
Incredible contest. Let's get it this week, guys.